Tomorrow we're going to be faced maybe with a situation where all of a sudden behind my back is a, is a bear. And he's going to be ten times bigger than I am. And I'm going to maybe freak out, right? Okay, that is Too not close. enough distance anymore to, to run, right? So what's then? You've got to stand your ground. If you uh, end up in close proximity to a grizzly bear with nothing to climb, is you have to stand your ground. And the way I... The way I do it, I'm not really sure how I do it because it kind of happened so fast, it, it's almost intuitive. But I stand my ground like I'm another, possibly another grizzly bear and a fairly dominant one because bears do this to each other all the time. Right. And during the spring, they're looking for prey. And if you run, you're just going to trigger a, that predator instinct, and you know, your meat. Let me ask you a question that comes up to my mm. mind right now. We are going, you said to me on the phone, <coughs> we are not going to take guns or anything like that, right? Right. Can you? Explain well, a little bit okay, here because, yeah, sure. I mean, everybody, it's the first thing everybody says to me, obviously. Says, yeah, make don't sure you go with a gun. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, what is your answer to that? I'm sure you have okay. one. Okay, uh, I love guns, right? I got nothing against guns. I, I right. have all kinds of them. But I never carry a gun in grizzly country. It would be uh, very unethical, very hypocritical for me to carry a big piece in the grizzly country. When I'm supposed to be making a film that's going to help and benefit grizzly bears, on their territory, and if everything doesn't go just right, <clears throat> blow them away with a 44 Magnum. And you're not worried about it? I'm not, it's not that I'm not worried. I just I think it would be, uh, it'd be poor taste. But I think there's another thing, too, that it's a little harder to explain. And that's, there's something about grizzly bears uh, that that gun gets between you and uh, uh, there's some kind of a primal experience you get with a grizzly bear without a gun that you wouldn't experience if you had a rifle or a yeah. pistol. And that's, uh, you know, the grizzly bear out there is the most dominant, the most powerful critter. It's not you. And your relationship to the bear is really altered by having to take that into stock. If you've got a gun, it doesn't happen to you that way. It's not a very easy thing to explain, but I hope by the end of this week, you'll know what I mean. What are you doing now? Well, I'm trying to get some smoke on my clothes to cover up my foul human scent. To get what in your clothes? Smoke? Smoke, smoke. Nothing is more nauseating to a grizzly bear than a human being, apparently. And I think that smoking my clothes helps me uh, with grizzly bears. And the grizzly bear has the best nose in the animal kingdom, and he can pick up a human being from a mile away. And uh, so I, usually every night I stand in front of a fire and I smoke my clothes. Well, I tell you one thing, whatever you helps, try it helps. Too. Yeah. I do it immediately. <clears throat> well, I think the idea... Like this, just standing like this there? Yeah? As much as you can stand, yeah, you bet. But the idea out there is probably to be as invisible as possible. I think it's a proper way to behave in the wilderness. Well, I tell you one thing, I hope the whole week is going to be as strange as the first night.